Welcome back. We are in week 12 of inverse methods in heat transfer. In the previous few videos, you had seen first some utilizations of neural networks for classification. Then we saw neural networks being applied to physics informed neural networks, but that was a forward problem. Now, what I want to show you in this video is simply a formulation for an inverse problem in PIN. I'm not going to show you the full solution. Uh, I'm just going to show you the formulation. I had already talked about this the last week, but I want to show you with one specific network, just like we did with the XOR gate case, just to get some intuition for what happens. The computation and the coding is a little bit messy. If I use a framework like we did with the Burgers equation code, you simply see the framework and you don't understand too much of what goes within. So this is somewhere in between. This is not explicitly a code, but this is just the formulation. So just for an example, I'm going to take an example that we took in week four of uh, something like heat generation and addition, which is basically convector. So remember we had this case um, where we had some body, we have some heater kept in there and it's losing some uh, heat to the surroundings, which is like a sink. And we use the lump capacitance model here. And this was an unsteady problem. So we actually took an unsteady problem. Uh, of course, again, this is an idealization and a very simplification. And in fact, we had some exercise problems where at various time steps, we measured the temperature and we wanted to find out these parameters. What's Q, what is uh, HA by MCP, etc. Okay, so given the measurements, find Q or H for which we of course require the temperature. So I had, let's assume that this data is given. You are given this measurement of temperature and time, okay? Now, when we solved it, the way we worked at it was this was the governing differential equation. So this was the ODE, which governed the process. So this basically is what we mean by physics of the problem. And this physics itself, we will use as data in order to solve the problem. Now recollect that for the conventional solution for the problem, we require this analytical expression. Okay, so this is what we required in order to solve the forward model uh, pin. Uh, so the forward model uh, based inverse problem. So this of course came from the physics, but we actually had a solution. And where did the solution come from? Because we had a solution to this OD. Now imagine we don't know how to solve this OD, which would be the case. Let's say we have something like Berger's equation, which we just saw, or we have an obvious Stokes equation. So the question is, can we solve the inverse problem without explicitly solving the ODE? Okay, so that's the basic question. And the answer, of course, is we can solve. So the solution method. is once again assume that T hat is a neural network, some neural network. So it takes in, in this case, just time because T hat is a function of T. We just take in time, just like the previous case, we put in some neural network here and we get T hat. So what we are doing is instead of using this expression, we are simply saying Y hat is a neural network of X, so to speak. Uh, we are using theta, of course, instead of T, it doesn't matter. We use T, uh, sorry, T hat is a function of T. Now we have, let's say in time, we make these measurements. So let's say this is the time axis and we make measurements at five, six points or 100 points, it doesn't matter. So these yellow points now are where we look at our least square function 
in terms of what we called MSEU uh, or I called loss of the BC or the loss of given functions. Okay. So function value is given here LT. Whereas we can also put a lot of other points in the middle. At these points, we satisfy the ODE, what was called in the previous code as MSEF. So the total loss is going to be loss due to the experimental or the BC or T plus loss due to ODE, which is at arbitrary points. So these points, the yellow points are fixed by where we take these measurements, whereas the white points are free uh, to do any value in the middle. Okay. Now, when we set the ODE, of course, the error is given by this equation, the governing equation. So this governing equation, I am going to write as if this is some y dot plus some constant equal to some other constant, lambda 2. Okay. So our inverse problem becomes, suppose I measure some 6, 7 values here, can you find out lambda 1 and lambda 2? Now, notice the difficulty of the problem. We do, we are not even giving you lambda 1 and lambda 2, but just based on these measurements, you want to find out lambda 1, lambda 2, as well as find out y, basically, in the middle. And that's where the genius of the uh, Raisi and Karniadakis approach is. So, just to show you what expressions look like, all we are doing here, of course, is assuming now that y is a neural network. Okay, so, proper acknowledgement, these nice notes were written by uh, one of the authors of the paper that I had shown you, uh, one of my ex-PhD students, uh, Vikas Bivedi, has uh, written these uh, nice notes and you, I would welcome you to read some of his papers in order to understand the Pi ELM method, which is somewhat simplified method. But we are not covering Pi ELM here, we are simply looking at some sort of pin in order to solve this inverse problem. So this y now here is a neural network. What neural network? That's given here. So we have chosen to show you an example where it is a simple uh, neural network with just one input as t. This, of course, is the bias unit. You have the hidden layer here with three neurons. We have taken an extra bias here too, just to make it look uh, reasonably um, complicated. So, Vikas has chosen to label this as 0. I would have chosen this as 1 and 2, but he has chosen to label it 0 and 1. Now, let's say this data is available at some 5 points, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. Like I said, we can draw it. Let me draw it in a horizontal line. So, let's say um, it's available at these 5 points, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. And in the middle, where I have given nothing, okay, so that's where we impose, uh, we can actually impose anything we want using the OD, the governing OD. So at all these other points, these will be OD points where we can choose as many as we want. For example, we saw on the Burgess example that we had taken 30,000. There is nothing that stops us from taking as many OD points as we want. Okay, so we come here, that data is basically free, the experimental data is what is restricted. Okay, so here is the hypothesis function. The hypothesis function, as you can see, depends on W0, it depends on B, it depends on W1, it depends on B1, etc. Now, what happens if we write it explicitly? We, Vikas has chosen to use tan H here, just like we saw in the uh, Burger's example case, we use tan H here. So now you can write the output. The output here is, you can see this weight plus this weight. Uh, so W10 plus uh, this weight, sorry. So W10, W20, W30 are all the biases that we have written out. But you can see here. So W10 T plus W20 T plus W30 plus the biases. 
So this function he is calling phi. So this is the standard thing. This of course is z1. So z1 is some wt plus the bias. So now you can write out y here with respect to the second weight. So the second weight you can see is explicitly written here. So some other weight multiplied by a plus b. So now you can see this is actually the final hypothesis function that we have. Complicated looking function. Notice how many unknowns are there. This is unknown. This is unknown. This is unknown. This is unknown. Now, because our governing equation involves d by dt, we differentiate this with respect to t. So when you differentiate this with respect to t, you get a secant h square or secant square h, uh, secant, uh, secant h square term here. Why? Because tan h when differentiated gives uh, sec h square. So that term is there. So um, since the notes will be uploaded for those of you taking course for credit, you can actually look through this and uh, look to see if you can identify the differentiation here. So you see uh, dy dt can be written as some w times some w and this is now phi prime. That is because secant h square is sitting here as phi prime. If for example, y hat was simply something like w1t plus b, then del y hat or dy hat dt would simply be w1. But it's a more complicated expression. So we have written out the full expression here for whatever corresponds to this. Obviously, this is going to be messy if I have more units than this, which is why we use automatic differentiation. As you can see, if I had put two um, layers here, you really wouldn't have been able to uh, differentiate this by hand. Okay, if this is the case, then how do we proceed further? So we write dy dt. Now you write j. So now what's j? j as is shown here is j ODE. How did we calculate it? So j ODE, Vikas has summed it only from 1 to 5, but you can have different ODE points. So let's say you can make this 50 points where you calculate the ODE solution. You can put a lot of points here. Whereas the function points are just five. Okay. So lots of points here, but just five function points. And these are the function points here. Now at these points, we know the values. At this point, we know the differential equation. So we can use the differential equation at these points without bothering about the values here. Okay. So this he has written as JR, which is J residue plus J sum function value. Okay. Now, this is not where we stop. Remember, we have to do W equal to W minus alpha del J del W. But lambda 1 equal to lambda 1 minus alpha del j del lambda 1 and lambda 2 equal to lambda 2 minus alpha del j del lambda 2. So all these are updates. We give guesses for these all three values and then we update those guesses here. So notice the w set or the new parameter set is these parameters which are from neural networks and these are the inverse parameters, the parameters that we are solving for. So very neat idea to put everything together in the neural network. Already, if you are solving for, let's say, a thousand weights, you might also well add a few parameters, which are weight parameters. Extremely neat idea to do this. So you can see you require these four from neural networks and these two, these two from the inverse parameters. So as is written here, W is W minus alpha del J del W. These can be calculated simply by backprop. Okay. So Vikas has written these out explicitly. 
uh, you can notice the parameters that are given here. So E here is simply the error. Um, I'll show you that uh, at the end. So you can see, again, you can see the differentiation. I am not going to look at these or go through these expressions in detail. I welcome you to uh, go through this. The whole point of this is to show how messy this process can get. Just like we calculated phi prime, you will have a phi double prime from a, uh, a second derivative that we take. And you proceed in the uh, same way. So you calculate for the bias term, you calculate for the next W, and you calculate this. But most importantly, here are these simple terms. Uh, when you take a differentiation with respect to lambda 1 and differentiation with respect to lambda 2. So here, the error can then be put together uh, in this term, T phi prime. This is just the term that comes from the differential equation. We can call this error OD. Okay. So when you put these terms together, uh, every single thing is written explicitly here. So when you put these terms together, you get expressions for del j with respect to each one of these terms, delta 1 and delta 2. And then all we need to do is simply do gradient descent. So we, you can, as an exercise maybe, if, if you are really interested, solve the problem that we solved using Gauss-Newton, using uh, this approach. Of course, it's really, really messy to find out all these derivatives. If you know Python or if you know MATLAB and the deep learning toolbox well, you can put it so that it differentiates the whole thing automatically and you can solve this entire problem as a inverse problem. So what I want to point out here is the complete difference in approach between our original approach, which used uh, Gauss-Newton uh, nonlinear regression approach and this approach, the Gauss-Newton approach did not start from the differential equation, but it started from the solution of the differential equation. Okay. So it started from the solution. And uh, since we knew the form, we could basically regress to it. Whereas uh, PIN cleverly starts with the differential equation itself, treats that as data. And of course, wherever we make our measurements are taken as additional data and you regress to it. And indeed, if you solve it this way, you will see that you get the same solution as the Gauss-Newton algorithm is in. So I hope at least it, this one threw a little bit of light on how exactly uh, this problem could have been solved using a physics-informed neural network approach. In the next video, I'll similarly give you an overview of how the same idea could have been solved using a surrogate model approach. Again, I am not going to show you a code because we have seen sufficient codes this week. And I'll just give you an over of, overview of how it could have been solved using surrogate models, the same nonlinear problem. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.